Hi. Today we're going to uh, improve the cart by adding a total for all of the items being purchased and also a checkout button. Enable the checkout in the database as well. So let's get started. So first off, we're going to work on the cart view and try to make a sum of all of the amounts that are in the cart for the user to see. Now, this has no value in the database yet, so we're just going to put that in the view for now. With the item quantity and item price, we have all the values necessary to calculate line totals as well as the cart total. So let's start by adding the item price. The item price is going to be the price of each unit multiplied by the quantity. So we can take this here and add in a TD slash TD and output the quantity multiplied by the price. This seems all right. We'll try it. And we see item price. Good. Now let's use that to start summing up the total price by writing here total or sum and incrementing the sum by this line price. The sum should be initialized to zero. So let's set sum to zero. And now we have this sum incremented by the line total. Good. Before we reach the end of the table, we need to now output the total amount. So let's add another row in our table at the very bottom here and let's just write in that this is the total subtotal okay and now we want to add that subtotal right below the item price each one of the item prices call span is equal to four okay and now Let's just add in the total price and that can be done by using an output set of tags here and putting sum. Good. Let's save this and try it again. We have the subtotal with this price. Perfect. Might as well extend the line all the way to the end. And here we go. Perfect. Now, maybe we should add a checkout link right here within our new table header cell. So a checkout link would look like the other links. Let's make that a button as well. So that would be user and let's just use checkout for the method name and we don't need to have any item listed here or specified for that. Let's make this button a success style button and write check out my cart. Okay. So there we go. A button to check out my cart. Now obviously I have not set this up yet. 
So we are at the point where we want to set up the checkout procedure. So going to our user controller, we will now add the checkout method public function checkout. Okay, so what's checking out? We want to get payment and then on payment set the cart to paid to the paid status. Good. So how do we set the cart to the payment status, the paid status? Well, we have the method define the user cart, which we've used above. So we have the cart. And now we can say that cart status is equal to paid. And try to update the cart. Let's see if this makes any sense in our order model. The update method is here. We have update order set status and set payment ID where order ID is order ID. So we have also have a payment ID information that should be there. Now we don't currently have the payment ID. So let's just fake it for now. Good. And once a client has paid his order, we don't only need to set the card to the paid status. We should also modify the inventory quantities. This is something to add in the future. So let's just try it out as is and see what happens. So I have my cart, which has the two bags of milk. I will click check out my cart. Okay, we don't see anything, no error message, and we're not getting redirected. So let's add in the header directive. Location colon slash user slash index something should be there maybe we should basically specify you've checked out your order or just redirect so for now we are only going to redirect okay well actually let's go see if there's anything in the cart let's go check the structure or rather the order table. Ah, we have a paid order here with some payment ID. So this part is successful. Now the part which is not successful is where we see the cart still with the products. However, we see trying to get property order ID of non-object on line 39 and we still get to see these items from the cart so let's go check in the code what's causing this when we are viewing the user cart in the user controller view cart we get the cart for the user user id and then get for order we use the order id here this is line 39 and it says that this is null yet the items still come back 
So let's go see what's going on with the get for order here in the order detail model. And there's no where clause at all using the order ID, which is quite surprising. So I guess that's an oversight from a previous time. So let's just write where, and now let's say order ID. is equal to order ID here and when we execute we need to have the order ID for dollar order ID but in the controller let's make sure we don't get the items if there is no cart or rather, we should add a cart if there is no cart. And we did this before. If cart is null, we make a cart. And that would be fine. Now, since we're repeating this code twice, might as well just use a method to produce the cart. public function make cart and we are going to make the cart like so if we look at the variables inside nothing here is using instance variables and nothing should be public about this so let's make this private so we make private function make cart here and make cart should return cart. And now we will say that cart is equal to make cart. We use this in both locations. Good. There's my cart, which is still non empty. Uh, in order to debug, we need to uh, take further steps. So for now, let's just uh, go uh, with a simple approach of var dumping the order ID and see what's going on. Now with PHP, uh, we have to be careful. There's no type checking. So this is certainly going to make our lives a bit harder. Um, so we have get for order here and there's a view. Let's just cancel out the view and look at our cart again. Because right now we're probably passing, we're still passing the string two. And the string two should not give us any of the other products. So. Um, Okay, so it turns out that this select statement is probably completely wrong. And let's analyze it further. And where we need to check that the order ID is correct. So let's just say order detail dot order ID is equal to the order ID given. Uh, but for the user controller, if we reestablish the view uh, to view the cart, then we'll see what we're getting. Okay, the cart is empty. So it turns out that the way that we're querying uh, in our model needs to incorporate the table name. And this is very important. Good. Okay. So now this is a bug-free application with slight improvements 
on the previous. In a following video, a later video, I will provide you with more details on how to actually proceed payment with payment on at least one of the major payment platforms. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a good day.